What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Drill Dozer. I, of course, am what the FNU, and let me ask you a question. How do you feel about going to an art museum and destroying thousands upon thousands of dollars of precious artwork? If the answer is yes, you're gonna love this episode. If the answer is no, well, frankly, you are boring, and I have no desire to speak with you further. <laughs> Look at them roll out. Jumping in the dozer. We're ready for business. That's what that pose says. Dozers roll out. And look at this. We don't walk into this place like we did with the Skuller hideout. They launch us in with a frigging cannon. That's how you start off a stage, ladies and gentlemen. We are wasting no time. <laughs> and listen to that music. I'm just going to be quiet for a second and let you take that in. Awesome, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. If you thought this game started off slow, it more than makes up for it in this level. Yeah, yeah, come on. Can you hear me? It looks like you made inside. Let's get it back. Now, there are two directions you can go here, left and right. And if Left 4 Dead 4 has taught me anything, when in doubt, head left. Left 4 Dead 4 taught me a lot of things, like what to expect out of your voice actors when you're making a video game. <laughs> And the answer is, it all depends on the context, because one way or another, it could be awesome. All right, isn't it kind of weird how that works? Like, there's different standards for different types of games out there. It always seems to be the games that take themselves seriously in the zombie genre that we end up not liking so much, unless it's a freak accident like The Walking Dead. That was an experiment, though, that had a lot of planning put into it, Telltale had a lot of experience with other projects before that happened, so they knew how to do it right. And here we go, this is our introduction to the air ducts in this game, or our official introduction. And by the way, I will not be breaking fire hydrants here, because that, my friends, is a fire hazard. Hey, I may be a thief, but at least I'm safety conscious. <laughs> Where do I even come up with some of these things to say? I don't even know what comes out of my mouth half the time. I just speak whatever comes up first. Hope it's entertaining enough. Are you not entertained? Probably not. This is me we're talking about. <laughs> I've come to grips with it, though, so we're all good. We good ski. Especially because we got second gear, and now we're going to really wreck through stuff. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. More chips, please. Thank you. Slide through there. This is a pretty heavily armed security for a museum, don't you think? They've got actual laser defenses. Even our modern museums don't have that. That is ridiculous. What kind of money are they making at this place? Although this probably is the only museum in the world, knowing how video game logic works. And oh yeah, we're in a museum. We should critique the work we see. Hmm, well, let's see here. A fancy piece, nice blue sky, view of the city. I like it. Little lacking in the color department, though. I feel like the balance should have been a lot better there. Let's see, what do we got about this piece? Well, we got a nice verdant forest. Hmm, simple but elegant. I like it. Here we have pink jelly flowing over a volcano, I believe. Huh, must be an abstract piece. Hey, wait a minute. I see two of the same picture in this place. Is this a fake? Did somebody turn in the wrong exhibit? Oh no, I believe we've uncovered a conspiracy. Maybe now we know why this museum is so rich. That said, I'm probably just going to take this picture with me. And you know what? It looks better over here anyway. <laughs> there we go. That's that for that. How about we go right now? So we've pretty much done everything we can do over there. I don't even think there's a treasure hidden in that place, if memory serves me correctly. There aren't too many secrets hidden in stage one here. Most of them are just shortcuts to get through the stage faster and other thi and caches of chips. I believe there might be one treasure, but don't quote me on that right now. It'll, co it'll all come back to me as I'm playing through the stages again. It's just one of those things where you can't recall it off the top of your head. It's sort of like Banjo-Kazooie or Super Mario 64. Like, if somebody asks you about one of the later stages, you go, Oh, I 
think it's over this way, but if you actually have the controller in your hands at the time, you're like, oh yeah, your fingers will remember for you. It's muscle memory. You've gone through it so many times, they just know what to do and how to react to this particular visual stimuli. Video games have a weird power over us in that sense, if you think about it. My mom always used to tell me, how the hell can you remember the names of every single Pokemon but not get your homework done on time? <laughs> and you know what? Looking back, she has a very valid point. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I really should have been a better student in school. If you'll allow me to be... If you'll allow me to be sappy for a second. By the way, these are called lateral lifts, not screw lifts like I was calling them before. Or socket lifts or whatever the weird <laughs> name was. I really... You know, it sounds cliche to say, but they always do say that you get out of school what you put into it, and I believe that's true. Like, I don't... I don't want to say I have nothing but bad memories of school, but I don't have any particularly good ones either, which is a shame. The only thing I really... I got out of it that I really enjoyed was orchestra class, now that I think about it, and... By the way, I'd really love to learn how to play this on a violin. It'd probably be hell on the bow, but... <laughs> God, now, I, did, I don't want to nerd out musically on you guys, but that is one of my favorite things about video games, is video game music. Don't get me wrong, it'll always be about the interactive parts. That is the most important thing, is gameplay, but I'm kind of a video game music nerd. I should probably... I have a playlist that's like 187 videos big at this point. I almost need to make a second one now of my favorite video game music ever. And if you're kind of curious about what my personal tastes are, just let me know. I'll post that thing. I'll make it on private. I just felt it was kind of weird posting that thing, and I don't know, maybe it's not something you come to my channel to see, I guess, is where the mindset was coming from. Like, maybe it's not worth sharing with other people, but... I mean, usually you usually you charge people for that. You make a top ten, and then they have to give you views to learn the, that kind of information, but no. <laughs> now I'm just making fun of myself at this point. I'm gonna shut up before I get myself in trouble with my other YouTubers. It's like, God damn it, you ruined the secret! You're spilling the beans, man, you're not supposed to tell them! <laughs> I wonder if anybody would actually get mad at me for that. I mean, maybe if I was part of a network, everybody would give me shit about it. I have a problem with that, I'm very- ooh. A minimalist piece. Ambitious of you. Yes, I have a problem of being very open about everything. I'm... I don't want to say I'm not a very good liar. I just don't like to. I don't see the point in it. Like, people are gonna catch you eventually anyway. It just makes everything harder if you're not honest and transparent about things. So I just find... Again, I don't mean to sound cliche, but honesty really is the best policy when it comes to a lot of things. At least in my mind. Uh, speaking of honesty, this is a bit of a pain. You can get chips out of these, but it's kind of tedious to just slug through. I wish you could just turn yourself up to third gear and just shoot alongside these things like you do the air ducts or screw tubes, as I was prompt to, prompt to call them. I'm surprised nobody called me out on that. Nobody had a single thing to say about that name. This goes to show my audience is way more mature than I am. These dogs, these things are a problem. Now, by themselves, their pattern is easy enough to catch, but when they're grouped up with other enemies, they are a pain to keep track of. And that's where most of this cha the challenge in this game comes from. Those minion waves where we see a bunch of enemies together, it's not just going to be the little ones that run up to you and just their only attack strategy is dying, pretty much. <laughs> no, they're going to throw in mixtures, and... Once you understand how the enemies work against each other, that's when you understand where the strategy lies. By the way, this is bullshit right here. It completely is. It's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, but you have to screw those things right to pull them out. You fail at architecture. Even our mechanic is making fun of them. Wow, the police sure make their robots on the cheap. That one was held together by just a single screw. <laughs> Removing the whole thing falls to pieces. That is impressive, I gotta say. To make a man-sized robot, like one that can be piloted by a person, sat in like a car, that is held together by just one gigantic screw, you have to purposefully 
engineer something that poorly. I gotta say, that is not by accident. Somebody knew exactly what they were doing. Maybe a disgruntled employee who just doesn't want to work at the station anymore. It's like, all right, you're gonna put me in charge of everything? How about this? <laughs> yeah, I'll make your robots on the cheap. You don't like my initial designs? Well, how about this one? Oh, what do we got here? Uh, rapid fire, pokey block, pretty flowers. I call this one Ode to a Dead Guard. What? You're right about what you know. You guys, don't you judge me. Don't you judge me. It's my art. You, you just don't get it, okay? You just don't understand the message I'm trying to convey with this type of thing, okay? I mean, screw personal in interpretation being the whole point of this medium to begin with. You just didn't understand the way I wanted you to experience it, and therefore all of your opinions are wrong. <laughs> I gotta tread carefully. I might become one of those artists in the future if I'm not, if I don't watch myself. Guys, I'm counting on you. Don't let me become one of those people, okay? I trust you not to let me fall down that path. And if I do, you have full permission to hit me with a shovel at a convention. And I'm gonna go on record about that. <laughs> You see me at a convention, I have become, and I have become one of these indie douchebags. You have full permission to do that. I will not call the cops on you. I will not press any charges. I will have deserved it, and I will fully admit it right now. Somebody needs to, me to bring me back down to earth. It may as well be one of my fans. And here we go. Easy puzzle is easy. And unfortunately, we can't jump up there to join him is sad because I wanted to be among the lions so long as they don't eat me the non-lethal lions anyway have you ever seen secondhand lions that's a fantastic movie absolutely brilliant which is a shame because apparently I'm alone in thinking that not a lot of th that movie didn't get a lot of critical reception I don't know why or at least not to my knowledge anyway I didn't see anybody give it any attention Oh, we just randomly found it at Walmart one day, and my mom was like, huh, this looks kind of interesting. Maybe we should try it out. Ends up becoming one of our favorite movies of all time. Go figure. You want to talk to her about her absolute favorite movie of all time? That would be shock a lot. And <laughs> for obvious reasons. Hey, you can't... When it comes... I, I stopped myself there because I didn't want to sound like a complete douchebag, but, you know, when it comes to Johnny Depp, you, our women just can't argue with it, right? Huh, fellas? Huh? Huh? No. No. I am, I am completely wrong on that. Oh, oh, God. No. No. Oh, shh. No. Don't do this to me right now. Hang on a second. I had no reason to be carefree. No, no, no. Until I took a trip. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Remember how I said in Klonoa 2 that my TV's been having problems lately? Yeah, just did it again. Ah, uh, well. Let's just make do, I guess. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's probably gonna happen. This isn't the best machine on the planet, so I kinda just have to take what I'm given sometimes. It's the only TV I've got, too, and I really don't want to mess around with emulators right now, so... We're just gonna walk over here in the corner to speed up this cutscene a little bit. Step forward so she doesn't have to move too far. And now, we're gonna have to face one of these robots now that it's moving around. No, no, go away. I don't need your help for th The game already taught me how to fight one of these things. I, no, no, screw up. Stop, I don't need you. You're just gonna stay there all day, aren't you? Fine, what do you want? Yes, yeah, of course it's just like the one I destroyed earlier. What do you think I am, blind? All right, when Fist turns red, get ready to dodge. Oh, red, you mean like the other attacks that I couldn't dodge before? Mm-hmm. There we go. I'm gonna drag this thing screw out as far as we can take it. Now this guy is gonna get tricky now. Watch how he's gonna pound his fists together. That means his pattern has changed a little bit. You have to stay close to him in order for him to start taking damage. This is how this guy works. Because look, if I dodge the first bunch by too much, he's gonna keep moving forward towards me anyway. You have to stay just within his range. Just close enough to where you're still in danger no matter how far you get. 
having to move just far enough to, tr to trick him into throwing the third punch and making himself dizzy, which I like and hate that at the same time because it's kind of tricky to get it to work because you're not sure what the exact distance is sometimes, but at the same time, it's a lot more tense that way. You know, you take the good and the bad with it. Ultimately, I think it's an interesting mechanic. And there we go. What a boss, right, ladies and gentlemen? Not even controlling Jill at this point. Just want to throw that out there. All right, but enough about that. Let's head in here and... Hey, you didn't see me. I'm not here. I am not busting into your vault, I promise. You saw nothing. And there we go. That's Art Museum 1-1, one, one, or 2-1, whatever the stage is called. That area is cleared. Wow, I really forced that one. Apparently, I still need work when it comes to making up lyrics in a video game. I am no Brental Floss. Not even close. Anyways, a red diamond must be locked away in the giant vault in that room. That's a problem, because the lock in the museum vault has three dials. Again, I feel like I gotta put extra emphasis on the capitals. Release lever is supposedly somewhere nearby, but I guess we'll just have to head back in there and find out. This seems awfully counterintuitive for you to have to tell me that now that we're outside and we just have to go back in anyway. Why couldn't I just stay in? And I had all three of my gears. I swear, they weren't that worn out. I'm, I'm going to find more in the vault, so maybe... You know what? Video game logic. Let's just chalk it all up to that, shall we? No point heading to the shop because if math serves correctly, we're going to have a little, yeah, just a little over 300. What did I tell you? You didn't believe me, but I told you once, I'll tell you a million times, you can never have enough chips in this game. I don't think I want to spend my chips anytime soon, though. 300 energy is a lot, to be totally honest with you. And we're going to need those chips for other things. But for now, we're going to head back into the map. And next time, we will be taking on Area 22, the Museum Vault. Until then, I am What the Fnew, and I will see you guys next time. Later, everybody. See you.